which means he has invited me into a dimension of living. He has invited me to a level of living that salvation has brought me into. So now that we are saved, let's find out what we were saved for. Modern day preaching has done a good job of telling us what we were saved from, but not such a good job of telling us what we were saved for. And the Bible declares you were saved for this purpose of sharing a seat with him in heavenly places. Oh, today I'm going to make you sit down. In heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So my salvation is not complete until I arrive at the right hand of the Father and sit with him in heavenly places. Which means my salvation is twofold. It's twofold. It's twofold. Which means there is a part of my salvation. And Paul starts going down it in Ephesians chapter 1. Up in the early chapters that I read to you. He starts talking about redemption through his blood. The forgiveness of sins. Which means there's a part of my salvation that is strictly conditional. Everybody say conditional, conditional, which means he had to change something in me. He had to fix the sin nature in me and get it out of me and redeem me. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away and all things have become new. He took that old sin nature out of me and then put in the nature of his son. And I received a brand new identity. Now. Now I was a sinner. Now I'm a son. Oh no, I'm not just some church member. Oh no, I'm much more than that. I went from a sinner to a son by the blood of Jesus. That's why the moment I got saved, my identity switched. And I no longer see myself for what I was and what I did. I see myself now adopted by God, an heir of God, a son and daughter of the living God. That's why I can't have low self-esteem. That's why I can't have issues. I used to have them. I can't have them now because I'm in the household with God now. Now I'm his son and I got to lift my head up and walk like I'm his child. I, I got to talk like I'm his child. I've been adopted. I've been taken out of poverty. I've been taken out of slavery. I've been taken out of defeat. I've been taken out of shame. I've been taken out of di guilt. He shifted my identity and now I am a son of the living God. Yeah, yeah, I know who I am. I know whose I am. He shifted my identity by changing my condition. He changed my condition. The blood, the blood washed my sins away. But then the Bible declares that he didn't stop with just changing my condition. He says your salvation ain't complete though until I also shift your position. Which means my salvation comes with the conditional change of my spirit but also a positional change where I shift in authority. Oh my God. And this is the part the church has left out. We are glad to be saved, blood washed, and we have promoted that and we should and preach it and preach it and preach it some more. But after you get saved, get seated. I was saved to be seated. So my salvation ain't complete until my condition and my position are restored. Now, where do you get this from? In order to get this, you got to go back. You got to go way back, way back to Genesis chapter number one. You got to go back in the beginning when God said, let us make man. 
in our image and after our likeness and let them have dominion listen at that listen at that God said I'm going to make mankind image likeness dominion matter of fact say that after me image likeness dominion say it again image likeness dominion this was God's will for mankind for us to be in his image after his likeness and to have a dominion why do we need dominion because God is going to rearrange the earth realm because there is a backslidden angel down here that needs to be put in check Oh, and the Bible declares that God went to the dust of the ground, breathed into the dust, and man became a living soul. Adam, God breathed into him, and he began to walk like God, talk like God, think like God. And Adam had so much dominion that the Bible declares that even the creeping thing knew who he was. He had authority over ants and Everything that God created and God said, this is the reason I made man. So I could have someone in my image, after my likeness, with dominion in the earth. Why do you need dominion in the earth? Because I'm going to give him the assignment of making sure Satan stays submitted to my authority. Oh, I'm about to say a thing in here. Come on, put your hand on your head. Say, Lord, anytime I need help, help my head. Come on, tell him, help my head. Help my head. Don't let your head get in the way of what I'm about to tell you. Because the Bible declares that Satan has one issue. The issue is he's full of pride. He's full of arrogance. He looked at himself one day in the mirror too long and said, I'm too pretty to worship God. I don't want to worship him. I want to be like him. And the Bible says he thought in his heart, I will ascend into the heavens. I will sit on the sides of the north. I'm going to be like God. I'm going to rule like him. Isn't that amazing how you can get so twisted that you try to overtake God? Who does the devil think he is? That you can get so twisted in your mind that you think you can usurp the authority of God. But he was so twisted because he is so bent to have authority and to have thrones and things worshiping him that he says, I will ascend into the heavens and I will be like the most high God. And God said, I bet you won't. And your Bible declares like lightning, he fell from heaven. See, this is why the Bible calls Satan your adversary. He's not God's adversary. God doesn't have adversaries. No, no, no. Satan tried that in as fast as you could blink your eye. He was out of there because you can't roll up on God like that. 